Scrawler Box. Hello everybody, welcome to another Scrawler Box video. This is the January 2020 Scrawler Box. So that means I've officially been getting Scrawler Box for over a year now. So let's see what the new year has in store for us. So the packaging has been ripped up again this month. We can see we got some pencils in there. This candy looks very interesting, so I'm gonna pick it up first. It is Videl Dipper Strawberry Flavor Chewy Caramel. It's gluten-free. Your gobsmack. I don't know what that means. Your gobsmack. So let's check out the featured artist. Very pretty abstract picture. It reminds me of sunset and water. Sort of like the sunset reflecting onto the water kind of thing. Maybe ocean waves. It's very pretty. They're very good with color. I'm not very good with color. That's something I need to work on. The featured artist is Marlene Rye, and here is her Instagram, Facebook, and website in case you guys want to check her out. Next we have the paper. Looks like it already got a little bit of a mark on it from the stuff coming out of the package and unfortunately got dented in the transit. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's the odd. Which sucks because this gray is a beautiful color. So we have a gray one and a slate blue or slate gray, whatever you want to call it. I call this blue and it is white on the other side. The texture is very rough on the colored side. It feels almost like sandpaper, which is actually not pleasant to feel. It's not pleasant. Hopefully it doesn't make any scratchy sounds whenever you use it. <laughs> I hate those sounds. So let's open up the package, even though it was already mostly open. So we have the Scrawler Box sticker. It looks like they just used the featured artist painting as the background. That's one way to do it. <laughs> So, looks like we got soft pastels. Please don't be chalk. I really hate chalk pastels. All right, so we have the Rembrandt Soft Pastel Desert Palette. Let's open it up and see what the texture's like. It's in foam. Interesting. I was expecting plastic. I'm really not a fan of pastels. Oil pastels, I'm a little more okay with because it's not as much of a mess, but oh, I already have it on my fingers. Ugh. I hate how chalk pastels have so much of a mess to them. Mm, not looking forward to this. It's gonna be so messy and scratchy. I'll do it for you guys. I'll use this for you guys. And then last we have three Brunzel design. Brinzel Design Pastel Pencils. The numbers are 31, 50, and 36. They do not have any color names, just numbers, which is better than nothing. And it says Holland on the back, I don't know why. We have a red, blue, and pink. So looking at this, we don't have any of that nice yellow or orange in our set, which is kind of sad, because that was a nice pop. Everything seems to be pretty similar in tone. So I guess you'd have to use these to make a pop of color. Yes. And the scrawler challenge is reflective skies. I was right. That's a reflection. Haha. <laughs> I'm so good. So now that we know all our materials, let's go test them out. So because I'm not sure which color I'm going to use for my final piece, I'm just going to cut off the end of this page that has already been dented to do my testing on. I'm putting down this piece of paper so hopefully I don't make a big mess everywhere. I'm starting with the pencils because they're probably going to be the least messy. They make a very scratchy, unpleasant sound, which I do not like. Maybe people that are used to using pastels can deal with it, but it's just not for me. It definitely will be difficult to get any small details unless I'm using these. Yep, these are definitely chalk pastels. Another thing I don't like about chalk pastels is they easily get contaminated by other colors, so you have to be more careful about it unless you're trying to mix them. These colors are nice though, very sunset-like. 
It looks like we don't have a white though. This color is the closest we have to white, but it's kind of like an off-white. Already it's starting to get dust everywhere. It's on my fingers. It's on the sides. Ugh. I hate messy mediums. Here's the three pencils up close. And the rest of the chalk pastels. You can see there's already pieces coming off the paper. They're definitely going to make a mess. Sorry about the negativity. I don't know if I mentioned in my other videos, but chalk pastel is one of my least favorite mediums. I do think I have some... what do you call them? Ear cleaners? Cotton swabs. I think I have some cotton swabs to mix the stuff up. Let's see if I can find them. I was able to find some cotton swabs, so let's try spreading out some of the pigment with this. So it's nice to make gradients with these. But you have to watch out for color contamination. Unless you're intending to mix the colors, as you can see here, when I use the blue side it mixes in a bit with the purple. The pigment is more spread out, but this does lighten it a bit. And you have the mixing over here. So now that we've tested these out, it's time to work on the sketch. So for this piece I decided to go with a woman floating in water with her hair kind of floating up as if she was upside down, and a sunset reflecting on the water. I wanted to have her have a very neutral, expressionless face, almost like an empty vessel. I really liked how the hair came out, even though I know it will lose a lot of its definition once it's colored due to the medium. Just like last month, the paper provided was too opaque to use my light box, so I had to use transfer paper again. This time I decided to go with the graphite version. Beforehand, I put down a large piece of black paper to attempt to keep my white desk clean. I started with the lightest color, putting down a base coat for the skin, then blended it in with a cotton swab. Then I moved on to the hair using the purple pencil. I tried creating highlights, even though once again I know it'll probably get blended out in the end. For the water, I made a bunch of horizontal lines in the blue and the oranges. Then I used my finger to blend them together, going in the same direction as the strokes. I add another layer of color to the skin, this time adding more pressure to try to get a more vibrant color once it's blended out. After I blended it this time, it kind of looks like she got punched in the eye. I just hoped that it would get better whenever I added more definition to the eyes later. I used the pink pencil to add some blush to liven up the face. I'm still not very confident with adding blush. I never know where to put it and how much to put of it. I always envy those cute pictures I see with rosy cheeks, but I haven't practiced enough to be able to do it without reference. To make the smaller details on the lips, I used a little paper football that I made. This is a technique I learned from watching my dad, who used to do a lot of portraits and pastels. I found it hard to make the small pupils on the eye because the chalk pastels are so fat, it was hard to tell where the edge of it was that was hitting the paper, so I kind of was just praying that it didn't make her cross-eyed. <laughs> I was still not very happy with how the reflections looked, so I tried adding more darker colors like purple and red to the sides, and then having it more light in the middle, but then I lost all the definition of the hair, so I went back and I used the darker purple color for the tips to try and make them look like they were farther down in the water, and I used blue to add highlights. Then I added more water reflections on top, and highlights for where her face was emerging out from the water, and then some little ripples around it. Next I used the blue pencil to add some line art to the face. With the darkest pastel, I added some shadow below the chin to make it look like it was more submerged. Last, I tweaked some details on the face and darkened the tips of the hair a bit. As you can see, I have pastel all over my fingers and on the table, and this was me trying really hard to minimize the mess. I think this piece turned out okay. I'm not really happy with how the water turned out, but I just didn't want to keep trying to fix it. I really did not enjoy working with the pastels. I don't know if it was because of the sandpaper like paper, but the scratchy noise whenever I was applying it and blending the pastels made me literally feel sick. Just like when you hear nails scratching on a chalkboard, 
that was the same feeling. And this was while I had headphones in with music playing. The face is what saved it for me. I was surprised by how much detail I was able to get with it. It made me feel like it was a bit worth it going through the discomfort of using the medium. I definitely should have practiced working with pastels on some thumbnails, especially with trying to figure out the water reflections better, but I just wanted to use them as least amount of time as possible. So I attempted to just map everything out digitally and hope that it would all work out for the best. Let me know what you guys think of the piece. Do you think that I was successful in using the materials? Do you guys use pastels and have any tips for how to make it a more enjoyable experience next time? Or do you also hate them? So let me know in the comments how you think I did, and if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, you can consider subscribing to my channel because that'd be awesome. Thanks for watching and see you again next time!